Hi and welcome to the latest installment of Michael's Musings on Music. Now I'm not sure how many people are actually watching this video, but to my small and faithful following, thank you. I hope you uh, find these informative. Today I want to talk about the woodwind section of the orchestra, the flute, the oboe, the clarinet, and the bassoon. Now the wood in the woodwind title is because all of these instruments originally were made out of wood but nowadays they're made out of very many different materials. The wind in the woodwind title is because the instrument creates a tone by producing a vibrating column of air inside the instrument. And the shorter the column, the higher the pitch. So each instrument causes the air to vibrate in different ways. The flute causes the airstream to vibrate by blowing across an edge very much like you would do if you were blowing across the top of the edge of a, of, a, of a Coke bottle, for example. Now, the flute these days are often, is often made of silver or gold or platinum, sometimes wood. Um, and the instrument has great dexterity. It can play many notes very quickly. The little sister to the flute is the piccolo, which is half the size of the flute, which means that when you play the same notes on a piccolo, it sounds an octave higher. Uh, and the word piccolo uh, in Italian is little. Um, now we have the, next we have the oboe, which has one of the most beautiful and plaintive sounds in the woodwind section. It's, but it's one of the hardest instruments to play. A beginner may not even get a good sound out of it at all. Um, the air column in an oboe is made to vibrate by blowing through two reeds, uh, which are made out of cane, and that gives it the buzzing. Uh, and, and the distinctive quality of the oboe. Now they make their own reeds, oboists, and it takes years and years to perfect uh, that technique. The larger cousin of the oboe is the English horn, which is neither English nor a horn. The sound is lower and mellower than the oboe, and the oboist can play the English horn for the same reason that a flautist can play the piccolo, because uh, the fingering's the same which means which fingers to place where to produce certain notes. The clarinet is the most recent addition to the woodwind family. It was not really a consistent member until the second half of the 18th century during Mozart's lifetime. Now it looks like the oboe, but is much more mellower in tone because instead of a double reed, it has a single reed that vibrates against a thick surface. Now there are many different types of clarinets in the orchestra. There is the common B-flat clarinet, the A clarinet. There's also the very high-pitched E-flat clarinet, and there's the very low-pitched B-flat bass clarinet. And these are all fairly common in, in the orchestra. The bassoon is also a double reed instrument like the oboe, and it plays the lowest notes of the woodwind family. Uh, it's even played with a strap because it's a, quite a heavy instrument. Now, it's musically extremely versatile. In the high range, it has a very ethereal and throaty sound. In the mid range, it has a full and mellow sound. And in the low range, it's very powerful and heavy. Then we have the contra bassoon, which is larger than the bassoon. And in fact, it plays one octave lower than uh, the bassoon and plays the lowest instruments of the woodwind family. So that's a quick snapshot of the woodwinds in the orchestra. I want to talk now a little bit about uh, the conductor's perspective, um, the kind of things you might talk about and rehearse uh, with the woodwind section. Now, the first thing a conductor has to realize is that each instrument has its own idiosyncrasies, and you have to know what each instrument is capable of. So, for example, if there's a passage very soft and very low that the clarinet is playing, you know you can ask the player to play so softly that it's almost inaudible. Now take that very same musical passage and have the oboe play it. It's impossible for the oboe to play as soft as the clarinet in that low range. And that's just something you have to know. So you don't want to ask for something that's impossible uh, to achieve. Now a standard orchestra has two of each woodwind instruments. Sometimes three, sometimes four even, but for our sake, we'll say two, that's a standard setup. So first flute, second flute, first oboe, second oboe, first clarinet, second clarinet, first bassoon, second bassoon. The first player has all the solos, has the high uh, registered notes. Uh, the second usually has the lower parts, 
but they have to be very sensitive in matching the sound and supporting the pitch of the first instrument. It's a very close partnership. So as a conductor, you are encouraging the second player to play as, as prominently as the first to make sure their part's clearly heard and well balanced to the first. That brings me to another thing that you work on in a rehearsal, and that's the balance, which is comparatively loud and soft. So, for example, let's say the oboe has a, has a solo. You have to make sure that the rest of the wind sections play soft enough to allow that solo to come out very clearly and without any uh, sort of effort. Uh, it reminds me too that in fact the woodwind section needs uh, the most help to be balanced in the orchestra. Because think of it, the brass usually or can play quite loud. The strings are right in front of the orchestra of the winds and the brass and there's so many of them. So the woodwind section needs the most help of any section in order to be well balanced with the rest of the orchestra. Another concern um, for a woodwind player and the conductor is where to breathe at it as it affects the phrasing. Now a musical phrase is like a sentence. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. And the idea is not to breathe at all during the phrase because you'll break the line. But sometimes you have to. You just don't have enough air to, to play the entire phrase unbroken. So it's up to the woodwind player and the conductor to decide where's the right place to breathe, where's the right musical place to breathe so people won't notice. And a good wind player can hide their breath. So as a listener, you don't even notice that they're doing it. What sort of articulation does the music need? Uh, articulation means the way a note is enunciated. So it can be very short and sharp, it can be very soft, it can be very delicate, and everything in between. This relates to a wind player, uh, uh, to how they use their embouchure. Now, embouchure means their lips, their facial, facial muscles, their teeth, and their tongue. And they use all these to produce a certain type of articulation, um, of which there are many different types. And that's something that the conductor and the woodwind player need to work out. So a conductor really needs to give wind players time to breathe, like a singer, very much like a singer. The most important thing from a conducting point of view, though, is to give them the artistic freedom to play. They really are soloists. And so um, you want to give them as much uh, musical license to play as they feel the music uh, should be played. Uh, when you conduct, it's like a two-way street. You are offering your idea through your gestures and they are offering their musical ideas too. And so the best scenario happens when both are respectful of each other and you as a conductor get ideas from the way they play as well. They really are soloists in the orchestra. Next week, I wanna talk a little bit about the brass instruments of the orchestra. So if you have any questions at all, please uh, uh, write them down in the comment box and we'll see you next time.